thank you very much. Um, I've been asked to say a few words, and I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible. I should start by saying that um, it's kind of very difficult standing there listening to somebody uh, talk about me like that. I think it's, it's, it's nice, and I wish my mother would introduce me to my friends like that. <laughs> but um, it made me feel like a naughty schoolboy, you know. Um, it really is a pleasure to be here accepting this honor today. Um, a part of my life was alluded to there, which struck me last night, was very important. A long time ago, I lived in a little place uh, near here called Glen Parva. Glen Parva was then a borstal, or a, a young boy's prison. And um, I got sentenced to 18 months in Glen Parva. And actually, um, I was told the other day, I haven't read my entry in Who's Who, but I was told that uh, it says there that um, educated in Glen Parva, Leicester. <laughs> um, graduated as well. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting because the hotel I was staying in was right next to Glen Parva. And last night I went there and I drove around and had some sweet memories, although I don't really remember what the outside looked like. <laughs> um, but sitting here today and watching people come up, I just thought that it, we don't have the time, but it would be really good to listen to everybody's story, not just mine. Why do I have the privilege of, of talking for a few minutes? Because you've all taken different journeys of, of getting here. And, you know, mine started on the streets, if you like, and yes, I was on the wrong side of the law. But I've visited prisons lately, and I've seen people who were just as talented as me who were still in prison and they were involved in crime at the same time as, as me. And they were just as talented as me. But unfortunately, for many varying reasons, they are still in that rut, in that cycle. And I managed to get out um, for personal reasons, probably because I was, be able, I was able to push myself, but also because I took various opportunities that came up. But I also noticed that a lot of you here are for sciences and criminology and stuff like this, and I want to tell you that whatever you do, boys and girls, <laughs> whatever you do, always have some poetry in your life. This is really, really important. It's always important to have somewhere else to go. Poetry for me is probably one of the most important things that I have. I've always spent my life fighting for the rights of men, women, animals, and even plants sometimes. Um, but, you know, poetry is probably the thing that keeps me going. In times of war, we still want poetry. When you fall in love, you want poetry. And I had a very interesting experience once. I was um, in a place called Cambridge. Some of you may have heard of Cambridge. It's, it's in another world, but it's not far from here. And I was rowing a boat down a river, slowly, with some friends, and uh, we call it punting. And uh, this friend of mine, who happens to be a professor, because I hang out with professors and chancellors and people like that, um, <laughs> he turned around to me and he said, Benjamin, you know, I think that we should make you into a kind of professor of poetry. And I said, yeah, you know, that sounds good to me. And he said, but there is a problem with your poetry, Benjamin. And I said, please help me out. Well, what is the problem? And he said, Benjamin, the problem with your poetry is that people understand it. And that's not good, is it? So I said to him, I pleaded with him. I said, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a poet that people understand. I want to be a, a real poet. So what do I do? He said, well, Benjamin, you go out into the real world and you observe things that are simple and you write about them and make them sound complicated. <laughs> And it was at this point I, I realized that the poet was uh, different from normal people. Normal people look and see and watch, but the poet observes. And, you know, as you go through your journey, wherever you are in life, just keep observing, keep some poetry in your life. And I really want to thank you for considering me for this honor. It, um, it really means something to me because of this journey that I've taken and because of it, because it is Leicester, it has even m more relevance to me. My mother, as was mentioned earlier, left Jamaica, literally saw a poster on, on, the, on the streets of Jamaica saying, 
Britain needs you. Come to the motherland. You'll be welcomed. You can work here. Everything will be wonderful. And you get the same sunshine, just like Jamaica. <laughs> um, my mother came, and she worked as a nurse. She trained here as a nurse. And um, she can't be with me today, but I know she'd be really proud. As soon as I leave her, I'm going to ring her and say, Mom, you know what? Britain invited you, and you came here, and you was a nurse. But guess what, Mother? I'm a doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs>